No time for a martini. Remain standing. It's a thrifty quickie on Mid-Century Wasted. We're starting off with a bang today looking at this vintage amber decanter. I thought it was very pretty, but then I saw the embossed made in Taiwan on the bottom and it wasn't old enough for me. Then I saw these weird turkey casserole crock things and what on earth would you use those for? I have no clue. These little tiny shopping carts were strange and then one of them said Costco Marietta on it. Marietta is a city around here. And I'm like, is it a, was it a giveaway from the grand opening? What, like, why? Maybe they'd be good for Barbies or something? I'm still digging through the bags here and I found these little Inesco geese figurines. And back in the back was a little child set of maybe false graph. Neither one of these things were interesting to me, but this was interesting to me. I am going to go through this bag at the end and you will see exactly why I absolutely had to pick this up and it was super exciting for me. $4.99 for the bag, first thing in the cart. This little piggy bank was so cute and I was really drawn to it. The price was a little high at $6.49 and it did have a little bit of paint loss on the eyebrows, but ultimately after milling it over, I decided to get it anyway. You know I always have a 20% off coupon. These little boxes were amazing. I loved them so much and I had them in my cart for a really long time. I like how there was different sizes. It was $4.99. Unfortunately, later I did put them back because I saw the little box was priced individually. So you will see that later in the video where I show you the price tag on the little one. This Mexican pottery bird was lovely, but it was $6.49 and it had a big chunk out of its back. Hey, there's Link. And so I decided, no, I can't get that for that price with the damage on it. I liked these little egg cups as well. They had a very 70s kind of mid-century vibe to them, but I just didn't know if that was a desirable thing anyone would want to buy. This piggy bank is a cow bank, kind of too expensive and maybe a little too contemporary for me. So I left that one behind. Here's a Tupperware container in a dark cobalt blue color. I've mentioned before that vintage Tupperware is something that I really just don't have a lot of knowledge in, but I can't say that I've ever seen this dark blue color. So it kind of captured my interest. I kind of looked at it for longer than I normally would have. $4.99 though, I don't know enough about it to pull the trigger on something like that. I loved this owl cookie jar, but like you saw there, it was chipped very badly on the top and it was $6.99. It was pretty sad because that was very, very cute. And normally I probably would have picked that up. This vintage ball jar or glass jar was interesting. I don't know about these either. Here's an, just another segment of what Jamie doesn't know about. It had a W embossed on the bottom and it definitely looked older. It was $6.99. I'm sure somebody who had more knowledge in these types of jars picked that up. I was looking at this gold ice bucket as well, but obviously it's brand new. It still had the plastic on the handle. It just looked vintage. This Scandinavian tray caught my eye. It has the dollar horse on it. It was $2.99, but then I flipped it over and it was from Home Goods. It was a contemporary piece, brand spanking new at the thrift store. I still did like it though. I like the style. Here's Patty's ice cream bowl. It's pretty giant. Way to go, Patty. These bowls were still there. Look at it. These were just in the last video where I put them all together and they're still there. The purple one's gone though. Those said Wolfgang Puck on it. I don't know what we use these for though. What is the purpose of these little trays with all the little dishes? Yeah. I don't I just don't have any idea I have no idea these salt and pepper shakers are Winfield China and I know that because I have some big platters I've been trying to sell on Facebook forever I put them down here so somebody could see them better this set was very interesting to me I looked at it for a while it had hanging wine glasses and a wine carafe and if it wasn't missing a glass I might have gotten this although it wasn't $20 that's kind of excessive I was excited to spy this amber Whitehall pitcher back here. I have a few of the glasses that match. So I was excited thinking I could sell them all as a big set. It's really absolutely beautiful. It's in that optic kind of pattern. But unfortunately, as I was looking it over, it was $7.99 also. It had a chip right on the edge of the spout where they're very common to get chips. So unfortunately, it stayed behind. Here was a giant lot of the Butterfly Gold Corel plates and cups and saucers. We do use these in my home, not the cups and saucers, but the dinner plates and they were priced really well if you needed them for your own home. I haven't been picking those up for resale anymore though. This bowl was super interesting. 
I loved the pattern on it. It was Rhythm by Homer Laughlin at $3.49. Unfortunately, it was just kind of scuffed up and the pattern was worn off in a lot of places, so I didn't buy it. I don't usually look at stuff like this. It's definitely not in my wheelhouse, but I thought the pattern on this tea set was so stunning and vibrant and beautiful with the birds on it that I at least gave it a glance. It was $22.99 for the entire set. Probably an incredible price, but for somebody who doesn't know what any of this kind of stuff is worth, I left it for the experts. This set of paintings caught my eye and also confused me because there were two different signatures and two different dates on them. They did appear to be original artwork and they're absolutely adorable. They're so cute, but I just didn't understand about the signatures and the age to them. Here I am inspecting to make sure they're, they're real watercolors and they were, and I probably could have picked them up and flipped them but I decided to just leave them. Here's a made in Japan set of geese, little geese and a big goose and it seemed like it was definitely missing some little geese so I didn't inspect it further. I just pondered what the heck it was for. Here's a single sailboat brass bookend and it had its original tag on the bottom that said Hong Kong so with only one I decided I would leave that. Here's a very odd little wooden graduation owl something. I think maybe pens went in their heads and it was a graduation gift sort of thing to Jennifer apparently. It was $3.99 and without the pens and being customized like that I didn't think it was worth picking up. Let me know in the comments below if anybody knows if there's any value to this little umbrella. It was marked $4.99 and I felt like it was a souvenir piece so I didn't know if it had any worth. So I was pretty excited about this. The other day I saw, I think it was just the spoon and it was missing a fork or the other way around. I forget now, but I guess they found the other one in the back and they rubber band them together and obviously up the price. But now I can get them. I think they're awesome and I love having big forks and spoons for sale. Also, there was this welcome sign. I think these are Dutch or Pennsylvania Dutch or something like that. I've seen people on that side of the country find these all the time. Are they called hex signs? It just popped in my head. I might be wrong. It was $4.99. Obviously, I don't know enough about it to pick it up, but I do like the sort of Scandinavian style to it. So here's some more piggy banks shaped like other animals. This one had a little bit of schmutz or maybe glue on his ear, although he was quite cute. And the hippo looked like it was probably the same maker. They have the kind of the same eyes and everything. I don't know what happened, but I guess somebody donated an entire collection of piggy banks to the thrift store. This vase was nice. It was Echo in Mexico. And if it didn't have all of this damage around the outside, I probably would have picked it up. This glass vase was contemporary and new, so I left that behind. I thought this little zebra bowl was quite cute and interesting. Probably made in Africa or something like that. A little too pricey for me, though. And this little, was it Chiminea? Is that how you say that? Had a little chip on it. I might've said that wrong. I thought this artwork was very interesting. It looked like it was carved out of wood, but it was actually ceramic. And it was just a style that I didn't quite understand fully. I didn't know how it would fit into somebody's decor. So although I thought it was interesting, I ended up leaving it behind. Here they brought out a fresh cart. So I'm checking out what's on here. This vase was made in Brazil and had that great Brazilian luster all over it. I set it down, but I did end up getting it. I just needed a free hand to keep looking at the rest of the stuff on the cart. But I did end up picking up that vase. There was also this little single shaker and some other various knickknacks and things, but the vase was the money piece on that table. This vintage paint by number obviously caught my eye, but it was a clown and ugh, I just couldn't bring myself to buy the clown paint by number. I know, go ahead and yell at me. Here we are back at the bags again and I saw the these Tupperware measuring cups in a great orange color, but I think it was missing one, so I left those behind too. These coasters were awesome also, but I couldn't understand why they separated them into two different bags. So they were marked $3.99 per bag, but there were only two coasters in each one. If they were combined into one bag for that price, I may have gotten them, but I just couldn't imagine spending $8 total to get a set of four coasters. And here they did the same thing with these blue terrazzo tiles, which I think were also possibly coasters. They split those up into two different bags as well. I just don't understand 
understand why they were doing that. I really love the terrazzo ones too. Here's another bag that they just put out filled with more of these little Barbie sized shopping carts. I still don't know what the original use was for those. Now I decided to browse through the linens and blankets. I really liked the color combo of this crocheted one and they had a bunch of quilts too with really fun patterns and colors on them but they looked like they were definitely mass produced or machined made in China probably. They, they weren't those good handmade quality quilts like what we look for. Now we're digging through the craft section, which I don't usually show because usually the all that's over here is like yarn and baby diapers. Don't ask me why they put the baby diapers over here. But this time they had a bunch of really good kits like this latch hook kit of the raccoon, which I did end up getting. And you will see me put a lot of things in the cart, but I did only get that one after all. I looked them up to see the value of what these unmade, sealed, new old stock uh, embroidery kits and needlepoint kits, what they sell for. And some of the other ones that I ended up grabbing, I ended up putting them back after I looked up their resale value. The raccoon latch hook though, I kind of got it for myself because I don't know, maybe I'm going to make it. I like doing latch hooks. I used to do those when I was a kid. That's about the extent of my needle handiwork abilities. So if anybody's dying to buy that raccoon latch hook, just send me an email. It's fine. I will part with it. I haven't started putting it together or anything, so it is still sealed, but I thought it might be fun, fun little project. The Christmas ones that I looked at definitely were the most intriguing, and I thought those would be worth something, and they are, but unfortunately these were priced at like six, seven, eight dollars and up per kit, so the resale value just wasn't there. Here I found a vintage hot plate if you are under a certain age, you probably don't even know what that is because I think they burn down like everyone's house, right? Isn't that how that went? So I left that one behind. And now I'm back over in the hard goods area because they have been putting out new stuff consistently while I was overlooking through the crafts. This little blue and gold dish was nice, but it just wasn't really anything special. And this little velvet, velour, velveteen, whatever, jewelry box, um, again, just not the best quality, not the best piece ever. Oh yeah, here I am showing you that these were priced individually. So $4.99 and $3.99, I wasn't gonna do that. These little teacups just got put out onto the shelves and they were very pretty. It was $15.99 for the set. I think it said 12. I think that's what that number is. So six cups and six saucers. It was pretty. Um, it is marked Germany or made in Germany, something like that on the bottom. But again, just teacups, not my thing. This paperweight was fun. It had lots of sparkly glitter in it, but the quality wasn't really super good. So I left that behind too. And finally, something actually useful, a shower beer holder. We all need one of those. I mean, come on, don't we? Does anybody actually know how to make coffee in one of these style coffee pots or espresso pots? I really should look into that because I feel like I find these all the time and there's some people who just swear by them. Now, as a very hardcore Friends fanatic, I thought this coffee mug was pretty cute, but $5 for a kind of cheap made in China coffee mug, you know, no thanks. Now for what is arguably my favorite favorite find of this day were these lucite earrings. They look identical and feel identical to lucite candles. They have the same gold flecks inside of them and everything. I was so excited to find these. I've never seen anything quite like them before. These seem really real with the gold flecks inside, like true authentic mid-century earrings. I, I don't know. If anybody knows anything about them, let me know. Here's a friendship that broke up. And also here's my biggest regret of this trip is that I did not purchase this little turquoise and gold bird necklace. I don't know really what I was thinking. It was not expensive at all. It was only $3 if you saw it for a second there. It had kind of an older clasp. The only thing I remember thinking is that it was very small and would have been like a choker and I didn't think anybody was going to want it. But I'm sure I am very wrong about that. And lastly, I was looking at this cute little Kokeshi keychain just for funsies. Here's everything that I purchased. It was kind of a small little haul here, but I got some cute things. Okay, so I had to at least show you the contents of that bag. First of all, we have this guy. What animal is that? What is that? Why don't I know what animal this is? Um, it's felted kind of on the bottom. And he's carved out of, out of wood. 
What is that? It's on the tip of my tongue and I just can't think of it. So there's that guy. There was this guy who looks like he's holding something up or just, I don't know, fed up. Uh, he clearly is trying to get his kids to clean up their toys. And then there's this little angel. I don't know if it's broken. It is marked on the bottom. It says Fort, copyright Fort, I think. Oh, you know what she is? I bet she's a um, place card holder. Actually, these are kind of okay, even when you find just one of them, because you can use it to hold a Christmas card, like a vintage Christmas card or a vintage Christmas photograph. See, it just, it sets right in there, right in between those two. See, I thought it was broken because I thought something attached right there, but I bet it's for holding a card. And, okay, so last but not least, the reason I bought the bag. Da, 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 da. Does that look familiar to anyone? Just a couple days ago in another thrifty quickie, I found these little, I guess they're cheese hors d'oeuvre picks, right? For mice cheese. I think Nettie tipped me off to that. I think they go in here. Look at how cute this is now. Dead. So cute. There is this one more though. What is he for? Cause see his, his pick is his, his, like he doesn't fit. He doesn't go in and he's got like nubbin, little nubbin arms. Like you try to put him in and that, you know, that just doesn't look right. So he'll just be like the little sidekick sitting on the side. Cause I don't know what he's really for. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching this Thrifty Quickie and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.